Today we are going to talk about Australopithecus incompetus, which is the first eusocial beetle. Australopithecus incompetus is a type of ambrosia beetle. It is thought to have evolved in the early Eocene and is the first known eusocial beetle. It was discovered in the 1950s and was named by Carl Sked in 1968. Ambrosia beetles are divided into two main subfamilies, Skeletinae, or bark beetles, and Platyponidae, pinhole beetles. Australopithecus incompetus belongs with the pinhole beetles. Carl Sked was an Austrian entomologist who studied forest ecology and the order Coleoptera. He studied with the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences in Vienna. The order Coleoptera is the largest order in the animal kingdom and is made up of beetles. It makes up 40% of insects. There are about 390,000 known species. The word Coleoptera is derived from the Greek word Colian, which means shield, and Terran, which means wings. This is because they have hard shiftness upper wings, which protect their fragile membranous wings beneath. So here's a diagram of a beetle. So it's got a head, the thorax the abdomen, spiracles, the elytra, or like that's their upper wing. The hard one whenever you see, whenever they're just rested and not trying to fly. The tarsal claws here, and these will be coming up later. They have three legs, as all insects do. And then their antennae used for sensory perception. Most eusocial insects belong to the order Hymenaptera. This includes bees, termites, and ants. Australopithecus incompetus is special because it is the first eusocial insect belonging to the order Coleoptera. It has been noted that the insect is difficult to study due to the fact that it spends its entire life hidden in its tunnels inside of eucalyptus trees, so you pretty much have to cut the tree down to get to them. A eusocial insect is defined as an insect which lives in a colony. This colony is divided into different groups called castes. Each caste plays a distinct role within the colony. Individuals of one caste have a higher reproductive capacity than those in other castes. The castes of the less reproductive individuals will help raise the offspring of the more reproductive caste. These castes are permanent, meaning the insect would not belong to a member of another caste at a later time. Although most of the females will stay behind at the nest, a few will leave in order to start their own colony. The female will find a mate. Once she is inseminated, she will burrow into the heartwood of a eucalyptus tree and lay her eggs. On reaching maturity, most of the daughters will stay behind and help their mother by caring for her larvae, cultivating fungi, forming tunnels, and all the tasks required for their colony to survive. Australopithecus incompetus is diploid. This means that they have 100% relatedness to their siblings. They are, in fact, more closely related to their siblings than they would be to their own offspring. High relatedness is often thought to be necessary for eusociality to evolve in an organism. All of the males will leave the nest and find mates. There is also no overlap of generation in this species. 
Another thing to note is the females store sperm. The males and females of this species differ in several ways. First of all, the female is larger than the male. It is also important to note that males are non-social and will leave the nest to mate, while most of the females will remain in the nest as workers. Tarsal loss, so that's like their claws, occurs in females shortly after they reach maturity. This is thought to be due to wear and tear just from crawling around in the tunnels. This limits their mobility and prevents them from leaving the nest in the future in order to find mates. Both genders are diploid. Mating has not been observed to occur in the nest, so there's no inbreeding, and all but a few females that leave the nest and start their own colonies will be unmated and therefore sterile. Only the females practice mycongia, which will be discussed shortly. Australopithecus incompetus is native to Australia and is found between New South Wales and Victoria. It forms burrows in the heartwood of live eucalyptus trees where it cultivates fungi and lives in a eusocial colony. Here's a map showing the range where the insects live. Some pictures. So they actually have a very long lifespan, so it's 30 to 40 years. And they only mate once in their life and then they store the sperm. A little while ago I mentioned a term called mycongia. This refers to the cultivation of fungi which is conducted by these organisms. Ambrosia beetles are one of the four known agricultural animals. The other agricultural animals are attine ants, macrotermitin termites, and as we all know, humans. Australopithecus incompetus has a symbiotic relationship with fungi, as do other ambrosia beetles. They have a specialized organ called a mycongia, which is used to carry spores from their birth colony into their newly established colony, and only females have this organ. They then tend to this fungi, and it serves as the sole source of food for the colony. While humans began farming about 13,000 years ago, ambrosia beetles began farming 90 million years ago. The ethanol produced by the eucalyptus trees is thought to be vital for successful mycongia to occur. Ethanol is produced as a byproduct of photosynthetic respiration and is a well-known antimicrobial. The ethanol will inhibit unwanted bacteria and fungi from taking residence in the tunnels. Therefore, the fungi necessary for the survival of the colony will have less competition and can thrive. Most of the fungi cultivated by ambrosia beetles belong to the genera Ambryocella and Raphalia. When starting her new colony, the female will deposit fungi spores into her burrow she will not lay her eggs until the fungus is thriving. Just to summarize as to why Australopithecus incompetus is pretty interesting and what they're all about. So, they're the first known new social beetle. All other known social insects belong to the order Hymenoptera is therefore very unique. So far we haven't found any others. Also, most tree-dwelling beetles will colonize dead or dying trees while this species lives in live healthy 
eucalyptus trees. It farms fungi as a source of food. <laughs>